Hello everyone and welcome to another video from yours truly, Mordecai and Mike. Now I know it has been some time since I've uploaded a video. I do apologize for that. I was working for a company for the past four years that essentially had zero work-life balance. So some things have changed for me recently, so that's going to give me more time to pursue things that I like to do. One of them being creating content, and I'm going to try to be more consistent with it. That's the hope anyway. I do plan on possibly doing some Last Epoch content here in the future, so keep an eye out for that as well. But today we're going to be talking about... Raven's Watch. If you guys haven't played this game before, it's on Steam for like 20 bucks. It is early access, so keep that in mind. There is one level so far, and there's also one boss so far. You do have six different heroes, and you can level them up to level five, which will unlock more traits or skills that you can use while you're leveling to the game, basically. So today I'm playing Beowulf, and I'm going to kind of roughly go over the skills and how they work if you haven't played this yet. So first of all, most heroes have what you would call like a trait. This is going to be your trait ability, and so it's like a little whelp or a dragon on his shoulder. It says, call Wyrm to empower next power special or defense. So a power is going to be your right click, special is going to be your E, and defense is going to be your shift by default. So everybody has basically the same attacks in each category. They're called the same thing. Your left click is your standard attack. So attack, power, special, and defense. Once you get high enough level, you actually unlock your ultimate, and you won't worry about that until later anyway. But, essentially what this little guy does is anytime I activate him and I use my power, my special, or my block, it'll enhance those abilities before I use them. So by standard default, your auto attack just looks like this. Your right click looks like that. It does like a little shockwave. Your E's like a little whirlwind. And then your defense is a shield. This will block pretty much everything in the game except for a few things. Any like red power slam ability it doesn't block but essentially blocks most things now what's cool about this is i can activate the little worm and i can use my right click and you can see he breathes out like a cone of fire like a line of fire with me while i'm using it uh, essentially does the same thing for the e do like a little whirlwind it slams around as an aoe fire slam and then when you're blocking with the empowered worm it'll actually gain life instead of taking damage so whatever the damage that would have been dealt by the monster would be it converts into life for you as you're blocking it which is really nice so let's go ahead and see what we got here so whenever you go to pick one of these skills basically they're going to be like white blue purple or gold or legendary tier white being like the lowest that you can get they can randomly roll i you know you can get like whatever tier at the beginning obviously it's more common to get common but you can see what both these skills do here Rampart is a quest. Anything that says quest is like you have to like complete something to unlock, you know, like an ability down the line, if that makes sense. So like Rampart, if I block at least, um, blocking at least an attack during defense earns one armor, complete worm defense heals 50% more. So if I block at least one attack 20 times, it will essentially then give me 50% increased healing when I activate the worm ability and then block. So this is actually pretty good, and you get armor stack too, which is really nice. You can get up to 20 additional armor. As you can see on the bottom left here, next to your health bar on the right, I've got zero vitality, zero damage, zero armor, and zero gold or money, whatever that is called. I don't know what the currency is called, but... So you can see your stats there. This one here, Draconic Binds. It says, hitting two enemies with a single worm ability earns 0.5 damage, complete trait. So if you do this 20 times, your worm ability gets 25% cooldown reduction as well as dealing 10% more damage. I personally like to go with Draconic Binds usually. But as we are going to go along here, I'm going to try to explain to you how things work and ideally what I like to do. So Beowulf is a lot of fun to play. He has a very barbarian-esque uh, playstyle. So you can block, you can see that life gain there. I didn't really need to gain life there, but I wanted to show you like essentially how that works. So you can uh, use the shield to block. You can use it to gain life when you block. Blocking in general is still really good. As you can see, you lose no life when you do that. Take those guys out real quick. So as you can see, like I said, your spacebar is going to be your dash. Shift is defense. And then you can activate these other abilities to enhance your current abilities as well, your little worm. The bar underneath the enemies there that's going to be like a stagger gauge. And if you can get that all the way full, you'll see he'll get staggered, which is really nice. So you can basically, you know, if you're about to stagger an enemy and he's doing like a power attack or winding up and you know you can like pull it off and get the stagger gauge full, you can interrupt him essentially. And block 
drop that, counter, stagger him again, nice. Obviously you want to get out of that. So, this is really good, power gets 20% more damage, I like that. The Voodoo Doll is also really good, bonus damage to bosses, but I think I'm going to go King of Clubs. So, monsters will actually do things based on time of day as well. So if it's nighttime, they will do different things, and if it's daytime, they do different things. So for example, these pigs, as you saw, they were detonating when they died. But at nighttime, they don't detonate. So some mobs are better to fight at night, some are better to fight during the day, essentially. Even some of the heroes you play, their skills will get altered based off night and day, and there are some tooltips that don't display that or say that. Um, like the Pied Piper, for example, I don't think it says his abilities change, but they actually do. So we have Heavy Strikes or Blade Storm. I'll be honest, I don't really like either one of these. <laughs> um, heavy Strikes, I guess. So this will slow your attack speed, but you do more damage on the third blow. Like, devastatingly more damage. I mean, it can be good, I shouldn't say I hate it, but since it was purple tier, I'll take it. Whatever it's called, Epic, I'm not sure. I don't know the official names yet of that. But it does make you do a ton of damage on that third hit, which is pretty nice. There is another perk that will boost your attack speed as well. So it could be pretty good with this in conjunction. I don't know if you can stack the two. I'm kind of backtracking a little bit. Talking and trying to explain not paying attention entirely, but it's fine. We get the idea. I am playing on Nightmare 9, by the way, which is currently the hardest difficulty. What I like about Beowulf, though, is his playstyle is rather rewarding. If you can block uh, at a timely manner, just like that, like if you get good at blocking, get good at procking the worm abilities based on what you need, he can feel really rewarding once you get his combos down and learn how to play him pretty well. Alright, so we have, this is like a reveal tower basically, essentially what, is what this is. And this will let you reveal stuff around you in the area to see what you can go towards. Kind of give you vision of the map. What buffs are around you and what you can kind of go for, plan for. I should have blocked sooner there. That was bad timing on my part. Alright, so let me grab the health globe. Health globes! They will stay on the ground for a temporary amount of time, but they will disappear eventually if you don't grab them. Money works the same way in this game, so you want to keep that in mind. What am I in combat with right now? It says I'm in combat, but I'm not sure why. What am I in combat with? That might be a bug. And, oh, I guess this one thing over here. Okay. That's a little unfortunate, because I was eating my timer. Alright, so we're going to go for this health node, and then we're going to go straight to the middle, I think, and try to go for the eye in the chest. So it's okay to take damage here, especially if you have a health node, because it'll put you at full health, and then it also gives you 10 to max vitality for the rest of the round, which is real nice. That third strike coming in clutch there. It actually does quite a bit of damage. I think getting it at the rank that I got it was kind of worth it. Alright. I'm going to try to kind of ignore and bypass those two if I can. Alright, so watch out for the meat hook. If you do fight um, one of those guys with the hooks, it's pretty smart to try to save your dodge and your your dash, I should say. It's pretty smart to save your dash and your defense, just in case he does grab you. Okay, we want to get out of that. So the pigs, when they detonate, they actually do hit other mobs too, which is kind of nice. Yeah, that was unfortunate a little bit. One of the downsides of the slower attacks with that left click is that right there, like you kind of can't weave in and out of combat as effectively, or not as well at least. It can be kind of punishing. So you gotta be careful of that. Okay. So if you look at this chest here that I just picked up, you see how it has the orange border around it? That's essentially saying that this is like a medium difficulty chest. You're gonna have harder mobs around that. The more you branch out, typically the harder stuff gets on the map. 
Just throwing it out there real quick. Let's get some extra vitality. I'm cool with that. To the left is a mini boss node over here. Um, if you do defeat that, it's going to be like a wave monster type thing. It'll reduce the end boss health by like 20%. Got somebody healing, that's unfortunate. I do not like that. These guys with the lanterns, you gotta kill them like ASAP because they will just heal everything around them pretty well. That third hit really does hurt. I mean, that's pretty nice. Anyway. Okay, so yeah, I'm definitely gonna go Eruption here. I'm a huge fan of Eruption. So what that does is it makes it to where the right click has an explosion at the end of the link, of the little right click or whatever. The power attack gets a detonation when the length of it expires, which is pretty good. It actually does decent AoE and stuff. Increases the damage it does when it detonates, obviously. Turn on block. Got the stagger on both. That was really good. Huge. Still stacking the quest too, by the way. And if you look at the bottom left there, next to my skills that I have, it says 13 out of 20. The little exclamation mark that just lets you know how many stacks of that you have. And the way you do that again is by hitting at least two enemies with an enhanced ability with your little dragon pet. So it's 13 of 20 right now. Once we get that to 20, it gets cooldown reduction on your trait activation and more damage with trait abilities, 10% more, which is pretty good. It is nice. So... I was say, I haven't found a lot of teleporters yet. Just found one. I don't know if I should be going for... <laughs> I don't know if I should be going for uh, hard chests. Because you see the red border there on that chest up above? That's going to be a hard difficulty chest. I'm going to block that real quick. Once you've played the game more and enough, you can kind of learn and telegraph the enemy attacks so it can help you with evading stuff. Nice, got another stack. So the trees at night, whenever they die, they spawn a bunch of spiders that come out of them. Can be really annoying. They can be ranged and melee spiders too, so. Gotta keep an eye out for that when you're fighting those guys at night. Alright, got a meat hook dude. The butcher, essentially. Okay. Grab that. Money's always good. Alright, we got guys that can heal here, so we gotta deal with those guys. Yeah, I walked into that. That was my own fault. Gotta be smarter than that now. Alright, we gotta get out of that, yep. A little bit of a play mistake there on my part again. We got it though. Alright, we have another health node here, so that's good. Grab that. Stacking vitality pretty well, so that's good. I don't want to get too far off into fighting those guys, so I'm going to try to get this chest real quick. And be careful. If those trees melee you, they'll just continue to melee until they don't hit something, so you got to be careful of that. Oftentimes when they spawn roots to try to snare you, they're gonna spawn they're gonna come from behind you, so running sideways is a good way to avoid those. If you run straight back, they're just gonna grab you most of the time. Alright. Did level up, so that's good. I definitely like this. This is also good though. After each trade activation, next three attacks gain 100 percent crit chance, permanently gain 10% attack speed. I think I'm gonna try it, because the Ignite one's cool, but I've never had 
the attack speed with crit with the slower attack, so I just kind of want to try it. Power cooldown, special damage. We'll go with a uh, power cooldown. Defense plus one charge would be good too. That means you could block with your shield twice back to back. It'd be really good too. Just figured it'd be kind of fun to try like an attack, like auto attack hybrid setup. I haven't done that before on him. I've never had those two traits together actually, or two skills I should say. So it'd be kind of fun to try it. Because the attacks are slower, it's nice to get some attack speed back. I guess I should, uh, probably should just explore up, huh? Find a teleport and come back down. I still got enough time, I think. This is gonna be scary here. I'm gonna try it though. If I can clear this, it'll be pretty huge. That is not good. I was gonna say, he rooted me right in front of that tree. Alright, get some block in maybe. Get some health back. Okay. That poison is ruining my life. Okay. Not gonna unlock. I don't think I'm gonna beat this one, unfortunately. A slow attack speed is pretty rough. That's the only downside to it, like I said. I probably could have played that better, though. Unfortunately, I did not succeed on that. Need to get some health pretty soon as well. Desperately need the health. That's, that's huge. <laughs> that was really good for me. That was good. Alright, let's grab that. Don't even really have to grab the other one. Just grab this. Alright. He's uh, whirling there to kind of get out of that little explosive bomb thing that thing threw at me. Alright, not bad. So if you get good at positioning with him, you can actually kind of use your right click as like a AoE for multiple targets, stuff like that. So I don't think I'm by any means a super expert at the game or anything, but I've gotten fairly decent at it. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and go for this. Yeah, let's do this real quick. I haven't earned a ton of money, which is a little unfortunate. That's alright. Nice. That was good. By the way, you do get revives um, on the hardest difficulty. You only get two, so I only have two revives. If you guys have, haven't, if you've never played Gunfire, I wish, honestly, I wish Gunfire would do a system kind of like that for solo play. Although they have improved that quite a bit, the solo play experience. So I guess I can't complain too much. I might make some videos on that too. I really enjoy Gunfire on Steam. It's a good game. A lot of fun that game is. Watch out for that. Block. Dodge that real quick. As I like to say, I drive a dodge. I don't actually, but I just say that when I dodge enemies in video games. <laughs> Alright, so now that I have my ultimate Honestly, I can skip most things because really, realistically, you're not going to level anymore. Um, I wanted to use that teleporter, but if you're in combat, you can't, so that's kind of a bummer. 
grab this money node that I... I probably missed a few of them, but... Yeah, the name of the game basically is you want to try to keep moving and try not to backtrack the best that you can. Try to get to every area in the map that you can. So I'm going to try to come over this way. I still have a little bit of time here on the bottom right. You see this little gauge here is ticking down. So I'm on my last day, basically. Do I have a... Do have a teleporter there, so that's nice. Nice, there's a money node there. I'm gonna try to grab that. Honestly, I can probably just try to rush this and get their ASAP. So what's nice about collecting money in the game is that you can use the money to upgrade your current skills that you have. And you can pick which ones you want to upgrade specifically, so that's real nice. So we still have a little bit of time to see if there's anything else around here worth grabbing. The node at the bottom right of the map, by the way, that's the boss. That's where the boss is going to spawn. You can go and activate the boss early if you want. Um, if you want to, it's up to you. I did try that the other day and it, it just, <laughs> I just stood in the spot where the boss was going to spawn at. And it just straight activated the boss. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> it was like really early into the match as well, so... Teleporter is good. Probably didn't need to come back for that one just because this one dropped here, but that's okay. Let's move on. Really trying to find as much money as possible. Gold, wherever. This way. Eh. I hate these little mounds. They're kind of like little invisible walls in a way. I'm just trying to see if there's any money nodes or anything around here that I can grab real quick. Okay. Could be one down there, but I really don't want to backtrack too much. This one here. This note here is basically like the three little pigs. You have to help a pig like build up defense at his house, go collect like hay or stone, and then help him defend it. Um, it can be rewarding, but I often feel like it just takes a lot of time. More trouble than it's worth, personally. Every time I've tried to do it, so I don't know. Alright, so we're going to have to probably fight this stuff off real quick. going to use ult here, probably. Bit of a bummer there. Alright, just need to cleave them out so I can go by. I'm gonna go by real quick. So, once your timer starts to get pretty low, it's a pretty good idea to go by and then go back out and try to grab something else because you don't want to be too weak when you fight the boss. So, I think. Yeah, I'm gonna boost the Dragon Cave abilities there. Um. Eruption is really nice too, so I'll probably grab a little extra eruption damage. Unfortunately, I didn't get a ton of money this round. I mean, if round 500 is okay, I'd say. Come around here real quick, see if I can't find something else of use. Real quick. Health node or something. Hopefully. We're hoping anyway. Might be something in there, but I, <laughs> I didn't quite go look. Hmm. There is some money there, but I ain't gonna have time to get that. Got a little boss. A little boss node. Yeah, it doesn't look like I'm gonna grab any health or anything. It would be nice if I could. There's a key. Can't use that. Not gonna have time to use that either. Alright, it's boss time. Do 
Didn't want to get hit by that. I was like, no, 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 no. Cannot block that. Anything that has like a red ground effect like that, you typically can't block, like massive like that. So, gotta be careful of that. You little dirty dog. Alright. Okay. They sometimes drop health, these tentacles, but not always. So, if you get lucky, good. If not, then that's just how it goes. <laughs> Definitely got to get out of that. Gain some life back. <laughs> Please attempt to. All right, not bad. Got to dodge the tentacle here. Yeah, it's unfortunate. I was gonna get hit by one of them. The tentacle does more damage. So. Okay, got to get out of that. Some life back, so this is good. That sucked a little bit. His ultimate can be pretty good, like if you get the right stuff and scale it up right, it's pretty decent. The only downside is, is you can't really control where it goes when you summon the little dragon out. There's always one. There's always one that hits me. That hurt a little bit. That is a bummer bummer. <laughs> I am trying. I still got two revives, so we're okay here. Sorry if I'm not talking a lot. I'm trying to concentrate a little bit. Ooh, girl. Ooh, girl. Man, that's... That's a bummer. <laughs> I went to block that to gain life and totally didn't get hit. Now yeah, so I'm gonna die here. I honestly just kind of accepted it at that point. I could have dodged it, probably got out of it, but I was like, yeah, whatever. All right, watch out for that. That can definitely kill you. All right, knees down. Gonna spawn the dragon out. That's it. Not too bad. Not a bad run. Not the strongest build I've ever had on him, but it was still pretty fun. As you can see, he's got a really fun playstyle, though. Anyways, guys, yeah, so that was it for Beowulf on Raven's Watch. In the future, I'll probably do videos on the other characters. And, uh, yeah, glad to be back. Appreciate you guys taking the time to watch the videos, as always, and any support that I've received over the years. 
If you could, please leave a like, subscribe if you haven't, or at least consider it if you like what you see here. And if you have any questions for me, leave them down in the comments below. As always, thank you for taking the time, guys. I will talk to you all very soon.